Uh, Hatem, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, well, you've just heard what Melinda uh, has been saying about these high level, the, perhaps the highest level discussions that have been taking place so far. How much confidence do you have and, and how much scepticism, I suppose, as well, that something concrete can be achieved? Uh, I'm very doubtful uh, that an agreement uh, would be reached. Uh, I think it's all contingent on the uh, playbook of Netanyahu, uh, who knows very well uh, that the United States is in not, not in any position today uh, to pressure him to do much of anything. Uh, Netanyahu is coming to speak to the Congress uh, on the 24th and, uh, of July. And he knows that uh, Biden is very, very weak uh, politically. Uh, and he is getting the support, the full support of the Republican Party, uh, the uh, Trump, uh, and a sizable segment of the sitting congressional uh, members from uh, the U.S. delegation in uh, Congress. Uh, Netanyahu also is assessing that if an agreement is reached, uh, this will be uh, the end of his political career, uh, knowing that the uh, investigation of October 7th will demonstrate uh, the, the total failure of uh, Israeli intelligence, the total failure of military, the total failure of security preparedness. And he is not uh, interested at this point uh, to put his career uh, on a ceasefire toward the Palestinians uh, where he uh, had constantly and historically wanted to torpedo any possibility of giving Palestinian rights. So I'm not hopeful of the negotiation. I think more at least dilatory than actually substantial. Right. So the suggestion being that regardless of what comes out of these talks, Benjamin Netanyahu may well find fresh demands or, or, or new red lines with which to delay proceedings. Essentially, you're, you're saying he's playing for time. He's playing for time. Uh, I, I know for sure he will be uh, in Washington on the 24th of July, and I don't expect anything to happen between now and the 24th. Now, is, does the United States have the will, considering now that there is a NATO meeting taking place in Washington, D.C., uh, with the change in uh, government in uh, Britain, with the change government in uh, friends, uh, uh, is there any possibility of pressure uh, that might mount in there? I think I will hold uh, at least my judgment on this to see what type of outcome will, will be the result of NATO. But so far, Netanyahu is not interested. He delayed every deal, even the deal that he actually sent to Washington to be delivered to Hamas. He himself reneged on it. Uh, so that was, those are the one possibility, again, that I would think, if the current division within Israel, I know that there's a big split now developing within his uh, government between the military leadership, uh, the army and the intelligence and himself. Mm. Would that cause pressure internally in Israel to take the deal and then fight another day? That might be one of the possibilities. So it's internal politics rather than the international diplomacy that might actually uh, push a deal forward, but not until the end of July, beginning of August. Yeah, so it appears the wait will go on. Uh, Hatem, we thank you very much indeed for your analysis. Uh, Hatem Bazian there joining us uh, live from London.